Well, that didn't take long. What's going on guys, Thrills in a Block back again. We're out here with the Rattle Can Regal and you see it's on the trailer. Yep, so ran to the parts store to grab some body filler and got out, went to turn the key and it cranked up and died. I suspect the fuel pump is dead, so I'm going to go in here and I dug up here in the trunk I think Salem Doyle's got a video on this possibly. We're gonna get in there, right in that area right there. We're gonna replace this fuel pump. But before I can do that, I gotta get this thing off the trailer because I can't get in the back door with it up here. So let me get it unloaded, and then we'll get this fuel pump. All right, so there's an access hole <clears throat> where you your pass-through section is, the back of the vehicle. This is the rear seat. That's where your armrest cup holder is. Flip that down. And there's where your fuel pump is. You can pull the carpet back on either side. Like so. I believe those are 10 millimeters, but before I get in and take those out, I'm gonna take a wire brush and clean up around this access hole. There was some moisture in the trunk and caused some flash rusting. And I'm just gonna clean it up so none of this crud falls down into the tank. Even though the tank's covered, you know, where we're pulling this sending unit out, I'm just go ahead and get it cleaned up. That'll make this job a little bit easier. Uh, I do recommend that you get some gloves. Uh, these are just some blue nitride gloves that are all dusty from sitting in the shop. Uh, since you're dealing with gasoline, uh, just protect your hands. And I'm using this wire brush here on a battery-powered drill. Once we get cleaned up, we'll be using the 10 millimeter right there to take those loose. Then I'll get, gain us access to the fuel pump itself, in which we'll probably need a flat tip screwdriver and a hammer to release the locker ring and possibly some pliers or something to get the fuel lines loose. Alright, after you hit it with the wire brush, just go in here with the rag and just wipe everything down. Any loose debris, just wipe it up out of the way. Or you can use a vacuum. Either way you want to do it. Sorry, the sun's coming in the back of the trunk, so making the camera a little tricky. Alright. Get your 10 mil on there. Just take those loose. Now, I'm going to set these in the cup holder in here so they don't get lost. You can put them wherever you want to. I don't recommend putting them by this hole because it's very easy to drop them into the trunk or under the car and they could be gone. Or you could have to remove the fuel tank to get to them and that would be tragic. So once you got that off or those out of the way there, probably want to get you a flat tip and pry up on this thing to get it up off of there. Flat tip screwdriver. twist action nice and easy just like so off she comes revealing yeah now I'm gonna get some compressed air and blow this dust up out of here I'd recommend that you try to clean this area the best you can because you don't want any of this junk falling in your gas tank Little hammer power, flat tip screwdriver. So after blowing the dust off, it revealed a car quest pump. I'm not sure how old this one is. But if I find that information, I'll put it on the screen. It's not the OEM one, so it has been replaced at some point in time. We'll be putting a precision in from the O'Reilly's. <clears throat> anyway, we got two electrical connections. On the left hand side and three lines on the right hand side probably a send a return and a vent would be my guess 
I'm going to go ahead and check my new pump to make sure our connections look correct before I go and pull this out of here. Here's the part number. Go ahead and open this guy up. So whenever you're replacing a new fuel pump, Precision has a lifetime warranty, but in order to get the lifetime warranty, diagnose the problem, clean, and then replace. So we did the cleaning, we diagnosed the problem with the fuel pump, and you have to replace your fuel filter as well. So we do have a new fuel filter right here, and the part number is right there. Ooh, installation instructions. All right, got some sort of fancy smancy wire. Um, looks like an adapter if we have to adapt the wiring. Probably a mid-year change would be my guess. There's our fuel pump unit. On top we have two connectors and three input lines. The fuel pump itself is actually contained inside that white plastic reservoir. And then there is the sock. I say plastic reservoir just because it looks like a reservoir. Not that it actually holds anything. But yeah, the fuel pump's down in there. Let me get this plastic clip out of the way and we'll take a closer look. That is the fuel pump right down in there. Spring loaded assembly pushes the fuel pump to the bottom of the tank. That's your float for your fuel level indication. And we got power signal up here at the top, and then your supply, return, and I believe vent line. All right, based on what I can see here, we have a four wire connection there and a three wire connection there, so we won't be needing to do any modification as far as power. There's a tab you pull, twist this connection back, pops that one off, and this one pull the gray tab back and then push this down right there on the black and then that'll release that. So that little gray tab I pried out of the way. Uh, it actually flew back on the fuel tank somewhere. So, yep, I don't know where it's at. Anyway, uh, with that gray tab out of the way, you'll push down right on, push down right there on that guy and then squeeze and pull back. to do because of the space in here and the angle and holding the camera with one hand a little tough there we go all right so comparing that to this you'll see we've got four wires and three wires. And be careful with your fuel pump whenever you're sitting in your vehicle or wherever you're working at. You don't want to bend your float because then your fuel level will be off. Um, so just be careful where you sit at that property where it won't get damaged. So after closer inspection, this requires snap ring pliers. There's a circle there and there that your pliers go into. You'll squeeze those together and then that ring will come out. So I'm gonna go grab my snap ring pliers. I thought this was a rotating ring. Well, that explains why I didn't see any tabs on it where you could tap it around. Snap ring pliers are required. Snap ring pliers looks up like this. And squeeze them together. Um, I don't know if these are going to work actually because the angle and the depth of approach. You probably want some where they come straight out the end. So they'd be pointing that way when you're holding them probably straight instead of these 90 degree deals. But this is all I could find so we're going to give it a shot. All right, plugs are unplugged. I got the fuel lines disconnected. You basically just go through and squeeze each side of the tabs, top and bottom, that motion, right like that. Then you can pull those loose. Um, I have to reuse these fuel clips because the new pump did not come with clips for the fuel lines. So I'm gonna reuse those and slide this new pump assembly back in there as soon as I get this old one out. All right, I figured this is probably worth showing you. Those clips are held on those little tangs right there. Use a small screwdriver, go inside and pry that little tang back like so, so you can push the clip back off. And 
you do that on both sides. All right, with those out of the way, we'll go ahead and remove our fuel pump. I'll keep this retaining ring here. Just slip that off, put it over to the side. We'll need that when we go to install our new one. Pump should come straight up out of there. Shouldn't be anything too complicated. Just take it nice and easy. Try not to knock anything down to your fuel tank if there's any debris left over. Have you some rags ready to catch any excess debris. And you want to make sure that you grab this rubber o-ring that sits at the top of the tank. You don't want that to fall in there. That's where your fuel pump seals at, so make sure you grab that. Don't leave that down in your tank. This tank's got, uh, I think I got about half a tank of gas in it, maybe a quarter of a tank. So it wasn't full, but it wasn't empty. Ease it up out of there. You probably want to take it out the trunk of your car instead of out through the back seat so you don't get gas in the vehicle. So I'm going to use both hands for this. Got it just about all the way out. Just give you guys an idea kind of what to expect. Last thing you have to work around is that float. Good idea if you got gloves on both hands so you can get in there and manhandle that thing and not drop anything in the tank like your o ring up there at the top. See the gas is still pouring out of this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this O-ring off of here and put this O-ring on our new pump. And our new pump will be ready to go in. Interesting, there's no springs on this one, so I guess they calculated the size to where it fits just one tank only. It's the new pump, working over the float. Of course, I'm doing all this with one hand. No room for a tripod inside the car. Maybe a mini pod, but anyway. Work it all the way up nice and easy. And it's gonna sit right on that bottom lip of the pump. So when you put it in there, it'll sit on the tank lip, which is right there. And then you'll be good to go when the pump is in place. Try to work this back down in here. Start with the float first. Down the hole in your fuel sock. Get it in there. You'll want to turn it to where after you lower it far enough down you'll be able to turn it around to the proper orientation. Drop your o-ring down in there. It should sit in there pretty much on that lip like that all the way around. And then you'll drop your Sending unit, pump assembly down in there. Before you get it all the way in there, you'll probably want to go ahead and hook those lines up. So I'm going to free my fingers up so I can do this without dropping anything. Try to make it as smooth as possible. And make sure that you slide your fuel line clips back on before you try to put your fuel lines on or they won't stay in place. So your fuel clips will look like that. You just pop them back into the fuel lines. That's the outside ones. The center one doesn't come off, so it'll stay just like it is. Then you'll slide those back on to here. Get your assembly all the way in, and then plug your electrical connectors in. All right, I forgot to mention putting the snap ring back on. Um, you can work it around the fuel lines on this side or put it on beforehand, either way works. Since it's a snap ring, it's not complete. It's pretty easy to get on there, not too bad. Um, got the lines pushed on there, they just push them until they click and then once they click like that they're all on there all the way since this is spring loaded I have to apply some pressure to get it down to sit flush and then we'll put the snap ring on plug in our electrical connectors all right we got our fuel lines back connected our snap ring is in place as you can see there it's locked in all the way around Take our two connections, slide those up there until they click. One and two. That completes the installation of the fuel pump on a 1998 Buick Regal GS. It's plastic Buick Regal, also the Park Avenue, I believe, and all the other models on the screen.
So don't forget to put your cover back on. Put this here, put your 10 millimeter bolts in there, and that'll complete your installation for your fuel pump. Also be sure to change out that fuel filter. There'll be a separate video about changing out the fuel filter. So I'll link that at the top of the screen, also in the description. My name's Erwin, this three wheels in a block. Fuel filter's on the run. We're getting back with time's taken away. We'll see you soon.